1961, and recognizes the first space shuttle mission on that same date 20 years later. In May, Phoenix sends back polar region imagery. The most recent supernova in our Milky Way is discovered. And Good Morning America pays homage to the Saturn V. These are among the first pictures transmitted by the Phoenix Mars lander of the Red Planet as it began its three-month mission. They're the first ever taken from the surface of the planet's polar region, where Phoenix made the first successful propulsive landing on Mars since Viking 2 in 1976. Another first is this photograph taken by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, of Phoenix suspended from its parachute on its descent to the Martian surface. No spacecraft had ever before been photographed by another as it was landing on Mars. Phoenix continues to survey and photograph the area where it landed. It'll soon begin digging into the ice-rich soil to study the history of water there and whether the Martian Arctic soil could support life. The three-month-long Phoenix mission will also study weather on Mars. Story update. After five months on a mission that's led to a wealth of discoveries, NASA's Phoenix Mars lander has stopped communicating with its team of scientists here on Earth. As expected, the Martian autumn has stopped producing enough sunshine for the lander to recharge its batteries and power its instruments. Among its accomplishments, the mission verified the presence of water ice in the Martian subsurface. Phoenix discovered chemicals that will advance the study of whether the Martian Arctic could ever have supported microbial life. The spacecraft also coordinated with NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to perform simultaneous ground and orbital observations of Martian weather and snapped more than 25,000 pictures. These range from sweeping vistas of the Martian north to images captured by the first atomic force microscope ever used outside Earth. Planned to gather and return data from Mars for 90 days, Phoenix exceeded its mission by two months. The most recent supernova in our Milky Way galaxy has been located, 140 years after it exploded. NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and ground-based radio dishes discovered the remnants of the supernova known as G1.9 plus 0.3 when it exploded 140 years ago in the middle of the Milky Way, it couldn't be seen optically because it was obscured by the surrounding dense gas and dust. Today, G1.9 plus 0.3's expanding remnant is detectable in X-ray and radio waves by Chandra and a ground-based array of dishes. We're standing right beside the Saturn V rocket in Huntsville, Alabama. Meteorologist Sam Champion hosted a series of live reports from the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville for ABC's Good Morning America program. The two-hour-long network show highlighted the Saturn V rocket as one of the seven wonders of America. The scientists that live in this... Designed and built at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville in the 1960s, NASA's Saturn V powered the Apollo missions to the moon. ABC calls the Saturn V rocket, quote, the embodiment of America's spirit of ingenuity. In June, the Smithsonian honors NASA's first 50 years, the search for space phenomena. Ulysses comes to an end. A down-under data gatherer helps Cassini astronomers and new wheels from NASA. The Smithsonian is honoring NASA's 50th anniversary by featuring the agency in this year's Folklife Festival, an annual event held on the Mall in the nation's capital. NASA, 50 years and beyond, includes visual presentations, hands-on educational activities, and exhibits that explore the space agency's past and future missions. The Folklife Festival is a celebration of cultural traditions of communities across the United States and around the world. The festival features exhibits, concerts, movies, food and lectures over a 10-day period. In addition to NASA, the Smithsonian is spotlighting the state of Texas and the country of Bhutan. The Space Philharmonic, under the direction of Emile de Kuh, launched the festival with its performance of Holst's The Planets at the National Museum of the American Indian. Former astronaut May Jemison helped narrate the concert. NASA imagery was projected onto the museum's wall behind the players.
The Space Philharmonic also performed the score of the new Disney Pixar movie, WALL-E, about the last robot rover on Earth who finds true love with a new robot named E. Liftoff of the Delta rocket carrying blast, a gamma ray telescope searching for unseen physics in the stars of the galaxies. NASA's Gamma Ray Large Area Space Telescope began its high-energy mission with a successful liftoff from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Gamma rays are the highest form of energy in the universe, with millions of times more energy than the light we see with our eyes. Glass will allow scientists to better understand what causes and powers black holes and other mysterious high-energy phenomena. What we see when we look in other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum is very different from what we see with our natural eyesight. And that by building instruments to aid our, using our brains to build instruments to aid our natural senses, we're able to learn so much more about the universe. A NASA European Space Agency mission to study the sun's poles is ending after 17 productive years. The Ulysses spacecraft was launched in October 1990 aboard Space Shuttle Discovery. Propelled towards Jupiter, Ulysses eventually settled into a permanent orbit around the Sun to explore its heliosphere. Originally designed for five years, the mission lasted more than 17. The vast amount of data Ulysses returned changed how scientists view the Sun and its effect on the space surrounding it. An amateur astronomer in Australia is helping NASA with information he's collected about a storm on Saturn. Backyard stargazer and retired miner Trevor Barry who lives in the small town of Broken Hill in western New South Wales first noticed the storm in February. He's been sending pictures to University of Iowa scientists and NASA researchers ever since. And this was just another night of imaging Saturn. And when I processed the images, there was the barest hint of some structure, a white spot. Barry's observations are supplementing data collected of the storm by NASA's Cassini spacecraft that's orbiting Saturn. I'm now involved with NASA. Can you believe that? Technology designed by NASA for the Apollo program is providing independence for a Texas teenager. Matthew Swinton of the Dallas suburb of Southlake is confined to a wheelchair by muscular dystrophy. A system developed by NASA for its Apollo lunar rovers allows Swinton to get around in his own modified minivan. Rather than a steering wheel and pedals, a joystick lets Swinton turn, accelerate and brake his vehicle. A touchscreen computer provides additional options, like blowing his horn. Watch it, buddy! Swinton is thrilled. His newfound independence is linked to NASA's first program to send astronauts to the moon. A recent high school graduate, Swinton will attend the University of Notre Dame in the fall and plans to drive to South Bend. One giant leap or roll.